Dr. Nagan, all you, thank you. Hi, welcome everybody. So I, just so you have a sense, uh, in the College of Arts and Sciences, we advise students who are in biology, chemistry, physics, math, et cetera. But we also um, oversee department, we have 25 departments um, in the College of Arts and Sciences, and those include even things like history, right, and English. And so I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about pre-health professions. Um, as a chemist and a biochemist, I study ribonucleic acid, RNA, and I study how uh, it folds. And these are actually, this technology is in the COVID vaccines. So it's very relevant. Um, but I advise pre-med students. Um, I have for most of my career. And um, one of the things that I find we really need to talk about is our topic today, which is what other majors you can be and still pursue a career in the health professions. So let me make sure that my, there we go. So what professions are we talking about? Well, of course, is a medical doctor, you can pursue a DO or an MD. Both of those will um, get you into a practice as a physician. Um, but a lot of students are also interested in dentistry, podiatry, um, pharmacy, and those require specialized degrees in their particular areas. Um, more and more students are going for something called physicians physician's assistant. And that's partly because it doesn't require the MCAT. It's a two-year program post back. Um, and it allows you these days to do a lot of things that you're able to do as a medical doctor. And then the other area that we don't talk about as much, but honestly, I feel like all of you who are in, you know, you all tell me, oh, I'm interested in helping people. Oh, I have this sick relative and I really wanted to help them. Public health is also an area that you can make a huge impact. You know, part of, you know, as we talk about the world stage and health issues, um, public health is about disseminating information related to um, pharmaceuticals that you need to take, getting a doctor, coordinating with social workers, um, getting out vaccines, I'm getting out education related to best practices about medicine. And so you there's an opportunity to be really out there in the community with public health. So I just wanna point out um, these different options and lucky for you, most of them require the same prerequisites. Um, so course wise, um, that's what you will want to do. So no matter what you do, honestly, Stony Brook is very well known for setting you up for success and preparing you. This has to do with your prerequisite courses, right? You're gonna need a certain set of courses that are like English, math, chemistry, biology, physics, et cetera, um, and your grades, right? You're going to want very good grades. I'm sure that all of you uh, strive to have good grades. When I talk about grades though, honestly, what I'm talking about is a 3.5 GPA. You wanna maintain a 3.5 GPA. Can you get into medical school and other professions with less than a 3.5 GPA? Yes, in some cases I've seen it, um, but you wanna keep up your grades. And so it's this combination of having prerequisite courses, these sort of universal set of courses that you need and having a high GPA. You want to marry those two things together, courses and your GPA. Medical school and the other areas don't actually say that you need a biology degree. In fact, you will stand out if you don't have a biology degree. So something to consider is what other degrees you could be obtaining that will set you on a path for, um, for a pre-health profession. That said, I also, while I'm on this topic, I wanna to talk about your whole package. I know that you're thinking about college, right? So you're like, oh, I just wanna to get to college first, right? But a lot of you are very focused. You know, you know that you wanna pursue this pre-health profession. And so I just wanna advise you now 
um, that you want to be thinking about your whole package. So this is like a stepwise process where you take your courses, uh, you obtain your good grades, but while you're doing that, while you're at college, you want these other things. You want undergraduate research. What does that mean? It means that you want to be part of somebody's research group. Why is that? That's because you are demonstrating that you can think like a scientist. Being a physician, a physician's assistant, a pharmacist, a podiatrist, a dentist, public health, all of these things require thinking like a scientist. And so you want to demonstrate that you can think like a scientist. That's what research offers you. You also want leadership experience. When I say leadership experience, I mean you are president of some club. I mean you are an officer of a club that is forwarding a particular idea. So there's lots of different um, pre-health professions, um, clubs on campus at Stony Brook. There's like a classic pre-med group, but there's also, um, I'm the advisor for the American Women's Medical Association, for instance. Um, there are all these different, there's a physician's assistance group, there's a veterinary medicine group. Um, so there's all these different clubs that you can join. And in the beginning, you'll just be like, you know, an, a member, right? But as you progress, you're going to want to think about who are you? Who are you that you're going to present in your application? And then you're going to think about what would demonstrate who I am, right? So I had a student, for instance, that was part of this program called Globe Med, and that's interested in um, providing medical care for those in other parts of the world that don't have good access to healthcare. And so I had a student and she was president of this group and she raised money for um, a maternity ward in uh, Haiti, right? So she didn't go to Haiti, um, but she raised money for them to install a generator and um, solar power for their maternity um, clinic. So things like that, right? So that's something you can put on your resume, but also you can write about as part of your personal statement. Um, it really shows who you are um, as an applicant. And the other thing that you want that, that goes hand in hand with this is volunteering and shadowing. You want clinical experience. Clinical experience is difficult to get, right? Especially you know, as you're thinking about applications, I know we have students both from the United States, but we also have a number of students from international locations. And as an international student, where you volunteer and where you are employed um, is limited um, just because you're here in the United States on a student visa. And so one of the things that we offer is the ability to go over to the Stony Brook Hospital, which is literally just across the street. So on campus, I know you haven't seen it yet, but there's um, you know, the chemistry building, the biology buildings, the math buildings, et cetera, but literally right across the street uh, is the Stony Brook Hospital. And the Stony Brook Hospital is this huge hospital with lots of different specialties and you can go over there and volunteer as an international student or a domestic student. And all it requires is literally a form that you fill out and you have, you know, I filled these out for numerous students where um, you just ask a professor or a reference to fill out some, a form that says that you're a good person and they can trust you and that you'd be a great, have great things to contribute um, over at the hospital. So um, volunteering, clinical work, shadowing doctors, leadership experience in clubs related to medicine, um, research, your courses and grades. I know it's a lot, but just, um, you can save this slide <laughs> and, um, and then literally ch check off the topics. So in the College of Arts and Sciences, we're a very collaborative um, college. We interface with all the other colleges on campus, um, including the College of Engineering and Applied Science, the Medical School, the School of Social Welfare, Health Professions, Communication and Journalism. And we're kind of the center of it all with all of these different cutting edge research and educational opportunities that intersect and have, um, have application towards the health professions. So for instance, there's clinical social science, right? That, that talks about 
working um, on the psychology level with uh, patients, but then right, mental health is a huge component. I have to say that even as a professor that my job has to do with mental health. And so um, there's clinical social science um, and clearly um, biochemistry and drug design are part of the interface between medicine and science. But then there's also things like artistic performance, right? So how do you communicate that you need medicine? How do you communicate that um, a particular prevention strategy will work in a particular community, right? So you have to think about this artistic performance and actually our Alan Alda Center for Science and Communication puts on workshops for all of our pre-med students um, that are thinking about communicating science and, and very technical things in a layman's and friendly way. So um, Paula has put a number of links in the chat. One of them is the pre-health uh, link, and that will help you figure out um, kind of the guidelines for any of these different careers. And then the career center and um, the medical center can help you with these volunteer opportunities. Oops, sorry, um, for some reason my slides aren't advanced. Oh, there we go. So undergraduate research. So we have so many students at Stony Brook and we have so many faculty and they are all involved um, in volunteering and experiential learning and research. So I actually have 13 students that work with me. They're all, they range from freshmen to seniors. Um, they've joined my group at various times, you know, when they're ready, they approach me and they say, um, I'd like to work in your research. I've looked at your website and what you do, and that really interests me. Do you think we could have a conversation? And so students work side by side with faculty members. We also have graduate students at Stony Brook and postdoctoral fellows. And so it's really about a huge community of scholars and being able to access all of this at Stony Brook. Okay, what you came for, um, alternative pathways, right? Like alternative majors. So you can get a biology BS um, and that would prepare you to do any career in biology or related to it. Um, but a lot of our pre-med students and pre-health profession students, because I said you don't actually need a biology BS, they choose to do a biology BA and then take on a minor. So I have a student, she's fabulous, um, Jennifer, and she is a biology BA major, but she has an English minor. So you can take on any of the College of Arts and Sciences minors. Um, she really loves creative writing. And she, so she finds it really rewarding. And a lot of our students also um, choose other minors. So you could be like an anthropology minor, you could be an art minor. Um, literally, it doesn't have to have anything to do with your pre-med requirements, but it's a way for you to do a lot of your pre-health profession uh, prerequisite courses and count that towards a major, but then also do something that you really enjoy. Um, one of the advantages of it is that it requires fewer lab courses. And so, as a prerequisite for your pre-health professions, you'll probably need to do what's called bio 204 and 205 labs. And so after that, you're done. That's the nice thing about the biology BA is that you just do the intro bio ones and you do the chemistry labs. But then after that, you're kind of, you're just doing lecture courses and then you can fill your schedule with things that you want. You can take a psychology course here, you can take things for your minor, et cetera. Um, one of our, the things that we offer that's very, so my pre-health profession students are really focused, like I said, and so they really like human biology, right? You don't want to study plants. You don't want to study, right? You don't want to study cheetahs. So if you are really focused on humans, one of the options that we have is this human evolutionary biology 
degree. And this is a joint venture between the anthropology department and the evolution and ecology department. And we also have study abroad opportunities um, in Kenya. So we have this Turkana Basin Institute that studies human evolution. And so you could go study abroad. I know some of you are international students and you already done that, but you could go to another country, right? So there are lots of opportunities um, to combine your pre-health requirements, a major that you like, your interests, and then you could go study abroad, right? Sorry, trying to do my, there we go. One of our newest majors though, that might interest your you international students is this global studies and international relations major that we have. So this is a new major. I think this is our second year of doing it. And one of the things that's really unique about this is that we have language as a requirement. So a lot of you already speak a heritage language. And so you could count that. Um, and some, some of you are multilingual, so you could count that. And we want to take your expertise in these languages and then apply it to studying cultures. And how does medicine or how does dentistry or how does public health, how does pharmaceutical and drug discovery, how does that influence this global stage? How do you broker global agreements? How does policy influence, um, you know, like, like on the global level, like UN policy, how does that influence um, health? and how these policies are carried out in different countries. So this is really a popular major for our students who are interested in more of a global focus. Okay, I know that all of you are really focused on this pre-health professions, but I just wanna put this out here because a lot of you are very creative. We have a new major called media, art and culture. And so think of digital art, videos, technology, staging, and how it influences culture and put that all into a major. And you could do that with your pre-health requirements and your prerequisites. Honestly, what I didn't say, and I should have done this at the beginning, is that you will do best in a major that you love. I know that you're all loving pre-health professions, but you will perform the best in a major that you absolutely love. And so that's what Stony Brook offers you. It's so big. We have so many majors. We have so many opportunities that you can find your niche. You can find that combination of things you love and put that all together into a career that you are very good at and sets you up for success. I know all of you are very smart, I know, but I have taught now 4,600 students in introductory chemistry, okay? And they are fabulous, fabulous students. But I will tell you that the difference between high school and college is difficult. It's, it's a weird step. It's like you remember you're only taking four to five courses, right? And right now you're maybe taking seven to 10, right? This crazy amount. And so we're putting this into a smaller amount and it seems like it would be easier, but actually it's at a higher level and a little bit more intense. And so I find that my students who want to be pre-health and want to succeed, the like, the cherry on top of the Sunday, right? The thing that makes everything perfect is to get help. And Stony Brook offers free of charge tutoring. So this is 20, like it's it, honestly, like in my general chemistry course, we have this group me chat. And so all these students are talking all the time about with TAs about getting help. Um, like, hey, how do you do this problem? But we have these dedicated learning centers on campus um, dedicated to all these different areas that students need help writing, right? Maybe if you're an international student, writing in English um, might be a challenge. And so we have a writing center that will help you. We have a math center. 
We have language center, chemistry, biology. Um, we have physics tutoring also. And so you, and we also have um, this thing called the Academic Su Success and Tutoring Center, and that offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So you can either drop in, you can go to office hours, you can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and you might not think that you need it right now, but I will say that this semester I had a student, he sat front and center and he had Quizlet open, you know, making quizzes for his chemistry stuff. But then he also had a tutor um, that he used that was one-on-one -on -one, and he came to my office hours and he was a top, top student. And you want me to be able to write you a letter of recommendation that says you are a top student. When you apply to medical school or dentistry or podiatry school or public health, you want me to be able to write your professor to be able to write a letter that says that you are phenomenal, right? And so getting help that's free of charge is also a big bonus at Stony Brook. So um, that is actually all the slides I have. I'm gonna stop sharing because I know that we have a lot of questions in the chat room. So let's see here, let me just make sure. I think actually, let me, there we go. So we had a couple of questions that we have answered, but I think one is really great to um, sort of re-mention. There was a question about pursuing a double major for those who are also pre-med and how does it um, clash or or deal with the workload, which you include um, the volunteering and the research and things like that? So honestly, um, I've had students that major in like, bi well, if you do a biology BA and you do a minor in like English, right? Those are that's a way for you to get a minor without having to double major, but you could double major. So you could do English and bio BA, for instance, and double major. But I would honestly make a four-year plan. Honestly, all of you should make four-year plans. And so what you should do is when you get accepted, um, you should write out a four-year plan of when you're going to take these courses. And then um, you can, if you're really, I mean, honestly, you're all very smart. So you can optimize your courses such that your um, general education or what we call Stony Brook curriculum credits, um, you could take some of those and count those towards your Stony Brook curriculum credits that might be your double major, for instance, and with your other major and put those together. I always say you, like as you're going through your freshman and sophomore year, you want the most options possible. So think about all the things you've ever wanted to do. I was gonna be like five different majors. So <laughs> I think about all these majors I'm going to be, right? And then I think about how I wanna take those courses. And I set myself up for the first two years such that I can kind of try things out, right? So you try things out. You take two courses in this, two courses in that per semester. And then you kind of see, oh, well, that one re really well. I really liked that. Oh, but that one, that was okay. I did fine, but you know, I wanna try something else. And so you have room, if you make out a plan that kind of optimizes these courses, then you can have leeway. Um, as far as volunteering and shadowing and doing undergraduate research, honestly, the first semester on campus, I would get used to being on campus. I might join one club, right? You wanna join a club because you want people. You wanna feel a sense of belonging. Then after you kind of get the lay of the land and you understand how things work at Stony Brook, then you could, for instance, look at a research opportunity. One of the things I didn't talk about is that Stony Brook University offers stipends, money. <laughs> so if you want to do research, you can get paid to do research over the summer. We have this office called Eureka, Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities, and they offer money, stipends, for you to conduct research over the summer. And so you could, for instance, this is open to international students also. So you could, your first year, join a club, and then you could, over the winter break, you know, look at 
research opportunities, start in someone's research group. And then after your first year, maybe in your second year, um, apply to get a stipend over the summer, right? Then you'd be on track. You also could do some of your shadowing. So you could do shadowing over the summer, over the winter break, but you could also, you know, honestly, I had a student who worked over at the hospital. Like that was his actual job was to work over at the hospital. And because of that, he got connections. He saw how the hospital worked. And even though he was just like an orderly, <laughs> um, he saw how people come in, how people go out, how they're treated. He was able to make connections with some doctors. And then he was able to figure out who he wanted to shadow, with, right? So, so it, it grows over time. And so don't feel like you need to do all this in your first year. Um, think about how you just want to get started and get a good foothold. And, and then Stony Brook is really just about taking advantage of the opportunities that are there once you get your, your foot in the door. So there's another question that we kind of answered, but I think given um, how many people we have, it's really worth re-clarifying because there's sort of two components in this question. Um, where the students talking about studying biology and trying to understand if they need to take what they call extra credit and, um, to be ready for the MCATs, um, where it's either another major or minor, um, and should the minor be pre-med. Um, so perhaps let's sort of break it out in, into two things. Let's talk about, again, this is alternative majors, so you don't have to be a bio major and you do have options to, to double major or minor and, and explore um, you know, anything you want plus pre-med and then maybe just touch upon sort of what helps prepare you for the MCAT. Okay, so actually, let me back up. You need to go to medical school, one year of English, one year of general chemistry and lab, one year of biology, one year of math, one year of physics, organic chemistry, biochemistry lecture. That's what you need, okay? And if you go to that pre-health website, the stonybrook.edu slash pre-health, you will find a list of these courses. And if you also go there and look under each of the health professions, you can find the specific prerequisites for the different pre-health professions, okay? So you need those prerequisite courses. A lot of those are covered in the biology major, but a lot of those are also just courses, right? There's courses. We don't have a pre-med major. No, like other people have pre-med majors, but it's really just a way for you to make sure you get all those courses. But I think you're all smart and you can just, <laughs> you can just take those courses, okay? Um, so you don't have to be biology. You can be biology. You could be an English major. You could be a French major. You could be a history major. You could be any of these interdisciplinary other majors. It doesn't matter as long as you have the right prerequisite courses. As far as the MCAT goes, in my experience, students who do well on the MCAT take biochemistry one, biochemistry two, some sort of anatomy, some sort of physiology. You can learn all of those on your own, quite honestly. And um, there are a number of free MCAT courses that you could take, and a lot of students do that. They will take all those courses and do that. But really what the MCAT is testing, I just wanna be really clear, what the MCAT is testing is your ability to think outside the box. So for instance, I teach, when I teach biochemistry, um, how to do protein purification. Proteins are a biomolecule, and then there's a certain way to purify them. So you could have taken my course and I could have told you how that works. But a lot of my students, honestly, are able that the questions are phrased kind of odd. 
it's like a whole bunch of words, right? A whole bunch of words about a system. And then they ask at the end, how do you purify this protein? And so it's your ability to be able to sift through all that information and understand what people are asking, and then to be able to answer the question in a reasonable manner. So I would say that it's about your ability to think and problem solve that's the most important. Honestly, if you did research, that would cover it. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's why I don't feel like you need to take extra credit you just need to be very well-rounded, take the prerequisite courses, and then be able to problem solve. And ex experiences, experiences, research experience, volunteering, leadership, those are the things that are going to help you think on your feet, think outside the box, and be able to problem solve creatively. Did I cover everything, Stacey? Yeah, absolutely. That was perfect. Um, I think the rest of the questions so far, we've been uh, able to um, cover uh, in the chat. Uh, one just quickly came up about our Scholars for Medicine program um, and open to international students, but it is not open to international students um, for those international students on this call. Um, it is, of course, open to our, our domestic students here in the U.S., not on a student visa. Um, it is it is an eight-year program, so it's not shortening your time. Uh, you still have to take the MCAT, and you can learn uh, more information. I'll ask, I'll ask Lawrence to just send a link to the Scholars for Medicine program. It is an additional application, um, et cetera, and we're happy to, to give you more information about that. But another question just came in. Um, so along with prerequisite courses, MCAT research and other components, the path becoming an MD in the US is notoriously difficult. For this reason, I've been discouraged quite often about pursuing medicine as an international student. So my question is, does US, um, does Stony Brook get international students that end up being uh, coming MDs? So I'll, I'll handle that question um, from the international perspective. It, it is extremely more difficult for international students to be accepted into medical school in the US. Um, there are only about 40 medical schools in the United States, between 40 and 50 medical schools in the United States that actually accept international students. So that is where the difficulty arises. So not every medical school in the US will accept international students. A lot of international students also don't realize that um, so medical school obviously is a graduate level program in the United States. It is not an undergraduate level program. So international students, you first complete your bachelor's degree, which is a four-year program in, again, any major you want, doing a pre-med track of these courses and, and the other um, tips in terms of research and volunteering and all of those things to help prepare you to then apply to medical school. Um, so we do have pre-med advisors and pre-health advisors that will that will help steer you into where to apply, who does accept international students. Um, Stony Brook for a number of years did not accept international students. This past year, they accepted two into the medical school. So it also will depend on the year, the applicant pool. Um, so I would just, I just caution students that about less than 10% of the population in medical school are actually international students. So that's why we also talk a little bit about alternative careers to medicine. Um, we talked a little bit in the beginning about physician's assistants, dentistry. Those programs tend to admit a lot more international students than MD programs. Um, additionally, at Stony Brook, we have an array of health professions majors. So within our health science major, we have a number of specializations. Sometimes they're even um, specializations that you might not have ever heard of and realize what that career path is and what you can do to still help people and be in the medical field. So we talked a little bit about healthcare administration, um, things like pharmacy, but we also have radiation technology, medical dissemetry. 
So coming to Stony Brook and with that interest in healthcare, um, you will be exposed to a number of different majors and career paths. And so we do encourage you to, of course, um, you know, versus discourage you to come in and be open-minded about what that's going to take you. Because certainly at a young age, uh, you, you often change your mind and, and or learn about things that really do, um, or, or I should say, learn about things that really do become your passion. Um, and it's not always being a doctor. So there's a question about, Katie Chong has a question about pre-vet. And so um, I just wanna say that um, you don't need, it's not about having a particular major. This is true for pre-vet, but this is also true for pre-med and pre-PA, et cetera. Just having that major will not prepare you. It really is about having the prerequisite courses, the specific prerequisite courses. So for pre-vet, you absolutely need biochemistry. So you need all the courses leading up to biochemistry. But with vet schools, you're going to absolutely need experience. You're going to need to know if you want to do large animal or small animal veterinary medicine and you're going to need experience doing them. But I had a student last year, she was in my research group. So I do computational RNA biology, right? So, so she was in my research group, but she got accepted to all the vet schools she applied to. And she wanted to do more like veterinary pathology, but she was a psychology major, right? So she was a psychology major. She did research in a chemistry lab that was computational. But then she also volunteered working with horses and she did some work with um, mice. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that you need that experience. I, in that pie graph that I had, grades and prerequisites were part of it, but the majority of it was your other experience. And so you want that other experience to really enhance your prerequisite courses. Um, right. And so there was a similar question about physical therapy, um, which is really kind of the same um, concept. You, you know, any health professions that you go um, into or are seeking to go into, you will be, um, you will have advisors who will help steer you to um, making sure you're taking the right prerequisite courses um, in order to apply for these graduate level programs. When, when you commit to Stony Brook, you fill out forms for your first semester of advising and actually um, answer questions about your interest in pre-med versus pre-vet versus pre-health professions um, and really will we'll have the ability to talk to um, students on that. Um, there was a quick question about the difference between the BA and the BS in bio. I know you touched on that a little bit, but perhaps you can uh, just touch on that again. Sure, so biology BS is a general biology degree that would prepare you for any profession related to biology. So that, like I said, includes plants, cheetahs, and humans, okay? Biology BA though, is a little bit more general and it requires the lecture courses, but it only requires bio 204 and 205 lab, one year of lab, which is also the same requirement for almost all the pre-health professions. In addition to that, it you take a minor. As a biology BA, you take a minor, whereas with the biology BS, you don't. You just take more general biology labs. You might take like a microbiology upper level lab or something like that. Or, but you also might have to take like, depending on what's available, um, you know, frogs. I'm, I'm just making that up. I'm not a bio, I'm not like a large bio person, but you see what I'm saying? Like you might be taking something that's more lab intensive, that's just on frogs, but you could with a biology BA have an opportunity to do something outside of those lab experiences. So you get all of your prerequisites for your pre-health profession and your biology BA, but then you also do this minor that has something to do with what you're also interested in, such as English or history or anthropology or economics or 
you know, you, you could kind of put it with whatever you would like. Um, there was a quick question about our, um, the acceptance rate for Stony Brook Medical School. Um, this, the acceptance rate for Stony Brook Medical School is typically under 10% um, each year. It ranges um, probably hovering around the eight, nine percent. Um, and is there a preference given to applicants who have gone um, done undergrad and, and not necessarily know for, for medical school? Um, obviously, with such a small acceptance rate, they're you know, they're looking for 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 all, you know, all factors um, that that we talked about. So, so not necessarily a preference. Um, and I think that brings us to the end of our questions. Um, I and also actually Farhan asked about a biotechnology major, and I just want to say. That, um, that Lauren aptly pointed him towards the biomedical engineering, but biotechnology um, is really just kind of a fluffy way of saying biochemistry. And biochemistry is, is a little bit more intense. And if you're really interested in biotechnology, I would probably do a bio BA, like, and then take whatever courses you would want in your area and do research. So I see someone asked about if you already applied to Stony Brook, should I submit another application instead? Um, if you're looking to change your major, um, you can email us um, in your portal. There should also be a section where you can change your major. Um, at some point in time, we do cut off the ability to do that for applicants because we already have, especially our biology program can be very popular. So it's, it is space limited. Um, but I am putting both, uh, we have two email addresses, one for all of our domestic applicants, um, as well as for our international applicants. So I'm going to put that in the chat. Um, and, uh, you know, and we can, of course, change that um, for anyone or you can ask specifically for you. Um, oh, a couple of questions coming in as people. <laughs> Um, yeah, looking for humanities and global issues classes. So honestly, I would go look at the um, globalization studies and international relations major. And just there's a ton of courses listed there. And those would all be globally related. Um, for humanities, we have an Africana studies department. We have Hispanic languages and literature. We have um, we have also individual languages. I'm not sure, like there's Asian, Asian American studies. Um, so you can kind of go look at all of those courses and a lot of those don't require prerequisites. So you can kind of sample what you'd like. I just also wanna point out that SBC means our Stony Brook curriculum. That's our general education curriculum. You put, you have um, in their deck, that's our older curriculum. While we do have some students, you know, hanging around that, that might still have that as their older general education curriculum. You are gonna meet with advisors who will go through all of your Stony Brook curriculum um, courses and, and objectives that you have to meet and make sure that you take courses. Of course, you can always look in our bulletin for those um, as well. Um, quick question about the selections for honors programs and scholars for medicine announced. They are not generally announced until March. Um, and then I have a quick question about as an A-level student who does not have physics, would it be wise to be majoring in biomedical engineering? Um, typically for biomedical engineering, including or any engineering, including biomedical engineering. Um, we do like to see physics, um, although it's not required. You will have to take it once you are here. You will have to have calculus level math. So A level math um, will be required for admission to that program. Um, and then quick question about 
um, regular admissions decisions will be announced uh, depending on when you apply. We are starting to release some decisions right after the new year, but anywhere up until uh, April 1st. Um, so, and then another question I have uh, looks like privately about uh, alternative majors like bioengineering or informatics in, as a way into medical school as well, or as a major applying to medical school. I don't know, uh, Dr. Ninghan, if you can address that or I can, if not. Um, I think, honestly, you're, you're, now you're spreading yourself thin. <laughs> like um, you, like I said, really want a good GPA. And so um, bioinformatics is a little bit more computationally intensive. And I recommend you honestly learn Python, um, which most of my students just teach themselves. Um, from a class, but then biomedical engineering is much more physics based, like all engineering degrees, you start out with a very strong physics background and you do the same curriculum for a number of years and then you go and you specialize. So juggling that with a pre health profession is a little bit difficult, just to be clear. Great, thank you. A lot of questions about AP and dual enrollment, and I'll even include IB and A level in there. We do give credit for, for, for all of those, um, typically a grade of C or higher or on the IB, five or higher, um, A level, C or higher. Uh, typically courses will either come in as elective courses or will come in to a Stony Brook curriculum course. On our webpage, you can see all of the different um, ways that they come in. They typically don't count towards major courses, um, but uh, absolutely accept that. And then I have a quick question about what if your high school doesn't offer AP classes, does that affect my chances as well as scholarships? Not at all. We look at each high school based on the curriculum offered in that high school. And especially on the international side, we know that many schools do not offer um, AP or, or dual enrollment or anything like that. Um, so it has no effect on your ability to receive a scholarship or your chances of admission. So I think again, that brings us to the end of our session. I did send the, our email addresses in the chat, but we want to thank you so much uh, for attending today. We did record it, it will probably wind up on our YouTube page uh, after the holidays, after the new year, and uh, and you can check it out uh, if, 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 you, if you need a recap or a reminder of anything we said. Thank you so much for the invite, and I hope you guys have a happy and safe holiday. Happy Thank New you. Year. You too, happy new year.